Okay, welcome back. We've done this once, but we've done this virtually, right? Okay, so, so your trips to India are what? Two or three times in a year, annual? How's the process? I like to do it a lot more, but it is twice a year. Now. Okay, so you like to do it or you want to do it? Uh, both. <laughs> I like and I want. <laughs> so besides coming in and meeting all these incredibly talented people that make up Qualcomm India, right? Coming back here to India, what, what, what's well, the main attraction? I think the Indian in me. <laughs> Last year, obviously I have my family, I have my mom here. Oh, fantastic. Uh, but coming down to, you know, before we get started, we're talking about all the exciting things that Qualcomm as a company and Snapdragon as a product is doing. Why don't you go and have a cup of coffee? Absolutely. Yeah, awesome. Let's do that. So interesting, but you know, I wanted to talk about something else that I find very interesting. And that is that suddenly Qualcomm seems to be a dramatically different company in terms of the way you are now getting consumers to understand what you do from products to capabilities to your AI, the fact that you're now uh, even in the laptop business and everything else, right? I mean, you're actually powering some of the most powerful laptops in the world. This is a company that used to be very happy with just its product speaking, but now you want to get the message to customers. What changed? Well, I think, uh, Rajiv, I think uh, the biggest thing is technology and experience are highly correlated right now. The challenge in all this is technology is very complicated. And so from a consumer point of view, how do you bring that correlation of that complicated, however, very experience-centric technology to the consumer? And there came the challenge uh, to Qualcomm, given we were deep in technology, great in building uh, technological products, however, relating them to the experience that ultimately the consumer can come to expect. And branding, our technology was an essential component that was uh, required in our opinion. That's how Snapdragon is a consumer facing brand now. But another part which I find very interesting is that India has always been those who have technology, those that are untouched by technology. The digital divide became even wider and wider as greater technology came in. But now I'm starting to see uh, you know, an almost triangulation that is changing that completely, right? Uh, the kind of products that are coming out, let's say you have a phone that is, you know, the, the hundred dollar phone as we call it, right? Uh, with full blown 5G, great capabilities, and it's not just one brand, but multiple brands that will take that out. This whole digital divide between what you're doing, the, you know, no compromise 5G phone that comes for $100, AI, and the capability to be able to run all that power that comes from, you know, the Snapdragon being inside. Uh, do you truly believe that this could be the game changer where those untouched by technology will finally be able to use it? I think the Prime Minister has a vision of connecting India, right? Today, about 600 people, 600 million people are still waiting for that connection to the internet. There's a few things that can happen. You can fiberize the whole country and it'll take forever and it'll be very capex intensive. The other thing is, you know, you can use the 5G spectrum that you have pan India and use portion of it for broadband connectivity. Qualcomm with its fixed wireless access assets and capabilities in the 5G spectrum. We've done this in 4G as well. Now with 5G, have taken on this uh, journey with India where we are enabling broadband connectivity in places which would have taken a lot longer to get connected using fiber, right? So 5G fixed wireless access through two of the largest operators in India working with Qualcomm is a real thing. And as a result, you know, far further inlands in India, rural lands in India are going to see a lot more connectivity to the internet. And ultimately, uh, you know, a big step towards bridging the digital divide. The $100 phone, which is a 8,000 rupees phone, again, it's a huge step in the direction of uh, helping people get off the button phones, right. uh, 2G phones, 3G phones, freeing up the spectrum to do more in the 5G world. And so these are big steps that Qualcomm is enabling uh, for helping, uh, you know, eliminate the divide as quickly as possible. Speaking about connectivity, uh, the part that I am quite surprised about nowadays is that there's a lot of euphoria around Wi-Fi 7, uh, especially for phones, right? We've seen iterations of Wi-Fi all the time. 
know, whenever there's a generation jump, it's there. But you know, nothing. No one gets truly overly excited about it. But this time, Wi-Fi 7 seems to be it. You know, I know that it'll come in all premium phones very, very soon. I know that it'll then percolate down to all other phones, right down to maybe your uh, $100 phone also. I know it'll eventually happen. What's the big euphoria around Wi-Fi 7. Why is this being called a game changer technology? It's an excellent question, Rajiv. I think uh, the big thing that, uh, you know, on the Snapdragon brand that probably is also a huge component is wireless communications. Qualcomm, when it comes to modems, modulator, demodulators for wireless communications, Qualcomm is the temple of R&D in the world for wireless communications. And we see what's needed. Wi-Fi is where a huge amount of data transacts over for all our experiences. Wi-Fi 7 is a way of overcoming some of the challenges that we would experience as more and more people consume data. For example, today a handset consumer in India consumes about 100 gigabytes of data. It's an order of magnitude larger data consumption versus a country like the uh, United States. Right. And Absolutely. the appetite is not holding back. Yeah, it's it's still not growing. waning, it's only yeah. growing, right? And, yeah. You know, we just got recent data on fixed wireless access, wireless access broadband. It's 500 gigabytes of data per broadband connection per month. And so you look at all this and you say, okay, great, you know, how is this experience going to con continue? in context of having the same highway, but so many vehicles to transact, right? And so you're looking at congestion. So Wi-Fi 7 is a way of combining two highways and let traffic transact across both the highways simultaneously. So a particular session may be operated over multiple bands simultaneously. This is a game changer. At a distance, at a range, you'll be able to get you know, good throughput, low latency, your experiences for your you know, 4K uh, display devices will not get compromised when 10 other devices are transacting over the same medium at the same time concurrently. 2025 is the year where you will see more and more devices and products using Wi-Fi 7 than ever before. And now let's move on to what we, most probably is going to be our favorite topic. That's why I've saved the best for last. AI, right? To a lot of people, just a buzzword, right? To a lot of people, maybe the single greatest innovation since the dawn of mankind. I'm in the latter group. I truly say, whether you think it's fire or the wheel or the internet or even the mobile phone, everything pales into insignificance when you think of what AI will be able to do. And you're really leading that revolution because you're enabling it. You're not just out there on the fringe. You're right in the middle of it, right? Take us through a little bit about Snapdragon, AI, your company as a whole. And what are the kind of experiences you're having because you're out there baking these things, right? What can we expect and where do we go from here? Well, I think um, AI uh, today, as many of us know, is all about AI in the cloud and data center. Qualcomm is leading in the category of bringing AI to the edge. AI in your smartphone, AI in your PC, AI in your gateway, AI in your IoT devices. And that requires a lot of computation capability in the power envelope, power consumption and battery life envelope right. that you have to work with. Uh, in the data center, power is not as big an issue, right? You know, size is not an issue. However, you want to bring it into the edge, all these aspects from technology point of view take a different turn and you have to be capable of going there. And my quick fire questions, you're out there you know, what we're going to be seeing as a consumer, you're already a year or two ahead in your labs, right? Whether they're in India or outside the country. What's really exciting you? I'm not asking you to open up with what's coming two years, but what's really exciting you for mobile users that is about to come in the next few months? Well, I think, uh, you know, what's the biggest exciting thing on a going forward basis is the world is going to be super well connected from an experience point of view. The big thing that's going to happen is, in my opinion, productivity levels are going through a newer you know, dimension in itself. And as a result, a lot more of the unconnected world is going to get connected. It is going to become a much better place than it is 
today. Absolutely. I think uh, on that very, very positive note, I'm going to say thank you. Enjoy the rest of your trip here in India and I'll see you very soon in San Jose. Thank you, Rajiv. Thank you. Nice Thanks talking a lot. to you. Always good speaking with you. Same here. Thank you. Thank you.